Hi everyone and welcome back to today's stream. Bear with me please, I just need to quickly do one diddly thing and then we're going to have a little bit of a reveal. Yes, this is how sad I am. I'm not letting you see it yet. Okay, so yesterday we left the image where uh, the percentage of the inking had been done. So I haven't touched it, but I have been doing some other bits to do with it. So here we go. Hopefully this is going to work. And here we go, hopefully. Ta-da! So there we go. Uh, this is the image so far. So you've seen me do a lot of the build up. Now what I did uh, last night was I took my Copic markers, everyone loves the Copic, and I did some colour swatches. So these aren't the exact colours that I would be use, having an idea of. These are rough guides uh, on my Copics of what I could use. So you can see most of it is the whys and the blues with some reds in. Um, and this was of course on cheap copy of paper as you can uh, see Ta -da! <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to play and do a quick colour swatch and that way I can make sure that the components of the image are fitting right and if there's any changes that I need to do I can add these in at this point now so on with the inking so it's going to be the same pattern as yesterday and same pens, so we're back to using the Faber-Castell pens and we'll be using the extra small and the small. But as you can see, uh, the head has slightly merged in with the main body and this isn't too much of a problem because I can use the medium grade pen to uh, add in more shadow and detail and bring that image back out. So off we go.
Hi there, uh, uh, apologies, can't pronounce anything today. Oh, thank you very much for the compliment. I hope you're well today. In fact, I hope all of you are well today. And I hope you've all had a good, safe day with lots of fun, preferably. Okay, so just gonna start to work out where the tail's gonna go. 
So as you can see by my blue lines, I didn't really in the end decide on what shape or how far out I wanted the tail to go. And as you can see also, I've changed the pattern from having the sycamore leaves at the top. Uh, we've now moved into more oak leaf and grass. There's some blue bells in here as well. And then uh, some almost like honeysuckle branches coming up. So I just need to sort out that tail. Now because I had my scully pencil with me today and I was doing uh, some just random sketches, I took out all of my blue graphite. So I just need to load in a new one. This is the good old Mars Micron by Stadler. Apparently you can get it still uh, here and there. But it's um it's an expensive one to go for. I think I saw it somewhere for about five pounds for a um a few of them. Oh. Hi there, Pizzi Fangirl. Hey, everyone's out tonight. Lovely to have you all. <laughs> and thanks, Void. Any shortcuts are always welcome. <laughs> Whoop, don't draw on for a walk there. Uh, as you've probably noticed, I've actually taken the image off of the sketchbook and what I'll do is I'll be trimming off this messy edge but for now I'm just being a bit scruffy and leaving it there. I shouldn't really because it can catch, um, but like I said, I'm being a bit scruffy. So I just need to map out where I want this tail to curve because it's enough. It's going to be slightly 3D so um, just making sure I get the position right. Also uh, remembering the limitations of bone muscle and whatnot. Yay we're happy bunnies over here. I hope everybody's happy bunnies. Are we all happy bunnies? I hope so. Now I don't know how to end the tail. Normally with uh, oriental type dragon you have a poof of fluff don't you? Kind of ball of fluff here. But do I go for a ball of fluff or do I do a leaf shape which would be more in keeping with the dragon? Hmm. But then do I want it big? I don't really want it too big though. I think this is too big. I think it's got to be delicate and yet strong to reflect the actual animal. Uh, so far this drawing has taken me to, what, are, what were we on yesterday? We were on two hours yesterday, plus the half hour to get the initial sketch, so um, plus 18 minutes, so mm, give or take two and, two and a quarter, three quarter hours? Yeah, about, just coming up to about three hours. That's from the initial pen, well, blue pencil onto paper. I'm going quite slow on this because I just don't want to bodge it up. I tend to bodge things up. Um, and also the thing that I've got to make sure of, uh, I did have some time off, or well, last night, after I did the little sketchy show last night, um, I took the time to do a colour concept. Let's just bring the camera up. Oh, crumbs, you're going to see my messy desk. No! Um, so I did, uh, after the show last night, I did a little bit of colour concept work. And the, as I said at the beginning of the stream, um, the whole reason is just to get an idea of what colours I want to use. And also just testing out the nibs on the Copics. Because yesterday I wasn't 100% sure if the Copics or... Should I use Spectrum Noir? Yeah, I, I'm not going there with that one. Um, and I realised, of course, I can't go Copics because you can get teeny weeny weeny dots with Copics. Uh, with the Spectrum Noir, I couldn't get teeny weeny dots. So I did some off screen colour work last night. This isn't how it's going to look at the end. This is just me getting used to. Um, the markers and this isn't this is just cheap copy of paper I'm going to be using uh, paper probably a Bristol board and that way it's going to work with the markers much better 
Um, I won't be colouring in the original. This is too cute, too nice. Uh, and also I need this for a master copy so I can basically photocopy on the Bristol board and then if I want to do colour versions I can do colour versions, if I want to edit it I can do the edits on the copy so um, it's just protecting the original. Um, this drawing has literally so far had my blood, sweat and tears. Uh, you will spot little orange red spots around. Um, it gave me a nosebleed. <laughs> So uh, yeah, this drawing is literally an embedment, well, has part of my soul included in it, <laughs> hence I don't want to bodge it up. Right, so with that said, I think, now I'm still not happy with this tail, or oh, tail. Uh, and the good thing about using these blue uh, graphites from Stabler is that they actually erase. So she desperately looking for her eraser. Yoo-hoo, eraser. Woohoo. Hey boy. Uh, no, you're not an eraser. You're not an eraser. You're not an eraser. <sighs> My eraser's done a runner. Uh, I do normally use a Tombow Mono eraser, which currently has gone walkabouts. If you saw the state of my desk, you would probably understand why it's gone walkabouts. I swear I didn't pack it in today's kit. Okay, it's uh, yeah, it's done a proverbial runner. You wait, the minute I finish the stream, it'll drop out of nowhere on top of me. <laughs> right. So, I'm just going to edit... And make sure that curve is nice and soft. Now here's where here's where there's a mistake is this piece here. There we go. That feels better. That feels a lot better. Right, so now back to the inking.
Uh, have I used any sort of reference? Uh, no. It's straight from my head onto the paper. Um, hence the anatomical proportions are quite incorrect. Uh, I've literally just used um, a plethora of thoughts that were going through my head. So I was thinking flora, I was thinking dragons. Um, and recently I did a drawing of a dog in flowers and that went down really well so I thought I'd try something completely different and try and do a flower dragon or a nature dragon so I literally started off with the blue uh, lined squiggles as you can see all over the page and then I've built the image up from that oh thank you hey, the thing is if you can keep your imagination nice and fresh and find kind of inspiration in the world around you, you'll find you can draw pretty much anything. I mean, whenever I go out, I carry a camera, so if I see something that catches my eye, be it the dog having a roll in some dirt or a, um, a cow in a field, something that just seems different, uh, I make sure I get a photo and I'll even sit down and just try and draw it there and then. And I always try and make sure I understand the why and the kind of why what of the creature. Uh, there's some really, really good courses online on, um, uh, I can't remember this now, Imagine International or International Imagine. Um, basically, Tara Whitlatch, who is one of the designers on uh, George Lucas's Star Wars team. So uh, she did a lot of creature creation. She's got some courses, I think a lot of them are free, on a project called uh, Tales of Amalfia. And she goes over the fundamentals and the principles of creature design. And it really does suddenly make you think. And you can learn how to draw creatures which are like rancors and um, tauntons, birds, everything. But it's you start off kind of with the basic normal animal anatomy and then she shows you how to turn it into something completely different. So for this animal you could say the head would be kind of deerish with the antlers, then you've got a serpent for the body and then you kind of got the dragonish side of it. So it's using animals that I'm used to drawing in real life and just moving bits of them about. The inspiration's all around you. It's just a case of getting out there and finding it. And uh, just a handy hint, if ever you're doing pencil work or any drawings, don't be tempted to put your hand on it and brush any rubbings out off with your hand. Because your hands contain a lot of grease. I mean, you can see mine is shiny. Shiny. Um, and that grease, if it soaks into the paper, can affect the paper quite badly. So you know when you go to a museum and you see an old book and people are handling it with white gloves? 
that's because they don't want the acids from their hands in sweat to damage your paper so I've went gone out and bought a really cheap makeup brush I think I got this from Wilkinson's for about two pound and it's soft and uh, I just use that to gently brush away any working um, bits of rubber or anything like that so that will just keep the drawing clean and it also means that when I'm using pens I'm not picking up uh, excess particles and affecting the nibs because if you get rubber bits onto a fine nib like this I mean this isn't the finest nib that I've worked in uh, I think that was a Copic 0.005 or something I had once but uh, if once you get grit and stuff onto that your line weight will smudge and go all over the place so it's quite important to keep your paper as uh, dust free as possible and the only thing I say about using a silicon uh, rubber when doing rubbings out over ink it will fade the lines a little bit but in this case I'm not too bothered uh, about that because I'm going to be reworking them anyway And yesterday I was a bit concerned about because this is a textured paper um, the paper that I'm actually using is I keep on forgetting what this is called let's do a quick check so the paper I'm using is a Faber-Castell mixed media pad you get 30 sheets it's acid free and it's 250 weight so that's why I'm using but it is quite a textured paper and I'm used to working on smooth Bristol board so it's uh, I was worried that I was going to start losing the tip of the pen that it would start to sand almost sand effect uh, I have actually had that problem with Sharpies I was doing a canvas book drawing and as I was using sham Sharpies to draw the image on top of the front of the book uh, the image lines were getting fatter and fatter and I didn't quite work out why until I looked at the sharpie and half the nib had been sanded away so uh, that was a learning experience I think I had was it, uh, two A4 cover pieces so front and back of this canvas book and I got through about eight sharpie pens because they just it just sanded the nibs away it was ridiculous but I couldn't use anything uh, softer than a Sharpie otherwise I would have well lost everything and also um, because I wanted the image to stay fresh and clean Sharpie was about the only one that I could find that would actually do the job right but uh, if, you, if you buy any of those draw your own book cover books you can get them from Ryman's and other stationery suppliers it's quite handy to have a spray varnish and then just make sure you give it a really good coat after you've done the drawing and the colouring and I was using I was using something terrible I was using Create and Crafts uh, shimmer spray and they do a glitter spray as well and actually it worked really well um, stunk to high heaven for a few days but um, yeah that worked and that's given the book quite a nice kind of coating otherwise you can use PVA but if you put um, PVA onto something can then get it wet sometimes it reactivates uh, so it's a bit of trial and error depending on the medium that you use bear with somebody's pinging me everybody's pinging me bing no, that's that's okay. That I can ping off. <laughs> right, so back onto that tail.
Right, just going to see if a very old piece of equipment for me still works. And this piece of equipment is a... Electric, well, not exactly electric, a uh, razor. Who knows it's electric, it's battery. Um, and I always manage to do it the wrong way around. Yeah, this is, um, I have had this for years. Probably 20 odd years. And I've probably used about three nibs. But this is a uh, proper silicon. Now, oh, how the batch is still going. No. Yeah, that's not looking good. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Um, my batteries are melted. <coughs> Whoops. Right, um, I think. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's why you should always take batteries out and um, not leave them in packaging. Um. Okay, let's try this one. I can never quite remember how these go around. Is it left or right? Yeah, that goes there. No, that's the wrong way around. Got that. Right, let's see if this fits. I hope it does. I can't believe my batteries are melted. I feel such a dare. Yes! Yay! The batteries may have melted, but she still works. Vroom. Uh, now most people will have... You know, oh my god, that's actually battery acid. Um, me, 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 me. Right, sorry. Okay, 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 okay. Darling. Right, the batteries are in a tray. Um, I think it's going to leak for a few minutes. There we go. Right, emergency over. <laughs> yeah, um, like I say, if you have a battery powder razor, if you're not using it for a while, please take the batteries out, as I've just uh, found out. I only used this a few months ago, but uh, clearly some batteries leak faster than others. Right, so, most of you will have seen the Derwent um, erasers, the little ones. They're normally a couple of quid for a small one. Now, sorry about the rustling, um, I normally have a... There we go, there we go. I always actually carry it. I've got three of these erasers. Right, um, so the normal one that you'll see in the high street is this one, which is a Derwent um, one. And you get the same thing. So the one that I've got, which is in this big. So I've got this and that, but I prefer this baby. Um, they are roughly the same size, uh, both take the same type of battery but if you're going to get an electric razor get a good one. Now the Dermont one only comes with the silicon erasers whereas the um, Sakura, Sakura uh, comes with two types so you get the blue for ink and you get the white for pencils so if you're using proper drawing ink, uh, in theory you can take quite a lot of it out with those. I've never had to use those ones as yet. Just checking my hands. <laughs> I hate battery acid. Right, so I'm going to use my proper one. Actually, I'll just, I'll just put the original batteries in. Oh, no comment. Right, so I'm going to just take out, I uh, should be able to take out the blue lines much more than using the Tomo mono eraser. Right, so here we go. There we go. 
Now like with all the razors, uh, this one is going to kick up some dust. I think I must have pushed the pencil too hard there. I'm going to say I'm going to be using a photocopy of this but for now I just want to make my life easier. This one does have a bit of a tug to it so it kind of pulls your wrists slightly. A bit like using a cordless hand drill. the um the innocuous stains quite quickly. Right. So once again once you use your razor, it's a case of don't use your hand, use a brush, even a, a dry paint brush, just to take off all of that shavings. I've just cleaned that up a little bit. I wasn't after the whole hog being gotten rid of there. But it's just taken the blue down quite a lot. In this case, I'm so pinging these batteries out. <laughs> Come on. Whoop. <laughs> uh, okay, that one went ping a bit faster and further than I thought it would. Bing. Right. But, uh, yeah, if, if you're going to do pencil drawing, uh, definitely, definitely try and get yourself a battery pad eraser. They're worth their weight in gold, and the stronger and better quality you can get, the better. Uh, it's one of those products that quality does matter. I can go back in my drawer. I have a heat. I have a double huge drawer unit next to me with uh, everything in. I'd say so back to the inking.
So that's the image so far. And as you can see, I've started to add in a lot more of the detail onto the tail. So I've now got the underdrawing onto the main part of the tail. And what I have to do is start to add in more of the detail onto this area. So I've got the second hand in, uh, including the hatching and cross hatching to make sure that shows it's in the shadow. The back leg, um, I'm probably going to do a second back leg in this space, but I don't want this area to be too cluttered, so I may just put a hint of a leg in there. Uh, because I don't think, if I bought that, the other leg on the other side up, don't think that would be realistic enough because I'd be stretching the anatomy too much. So it'd almost be like um, the equivalent of a human trying to lick their inner thigh. You know, you know how cats do when they kind of sit down, leg in the air, wash, wash. Th that would probably be the equivalent. And though this is a fantasy creature, I've still got to keep it in the realm of realism to a degree. So the motion, it's got to be believable. So in this case it's serpentine, so we know that it's got a certain amount of flexibility. But a snake can't physically tie itself in a reef knot. So there are limitations to how much it can stretch and contract. Uh, depending on if this animal had a skeleton built of bone or light cartilage, would also affect the amount of uh, flexation and movement within it. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I will be planning to colour this. In fact, I'm just trying to think. Uh, hmm. Right, well we're at one hour and one minute, so what I'm going to do is tidy up a little bit around here and then I get the feeling if I've got time tomorrow I might do another stream tomorrow just going over um, starting some colour work on it but uh, like last night it's probably best that I have a snooze just a few hours have a day at work and then come back to it <laughs> I mean there's each time I step back look at it and then step forward again towards the drawing. I can see areas that I do want to make adjustments to, um, areas that will need a lot more work. So areas where there's gaps and maybe I could fix that. But then there's some areas that I feel maybe are too cluttered so when colour goes on there that should help because I can actually overlay the colour and people won't see the detail, they'll just see the colour. So there's a few kind of tricks and things that I can do with this image. Just gonna try and re outline that outline. I've lost a little bit of the ink. So that's the black and white. And then eventually once I decide what colours I'm going for, we'll have something moderately look somewhere around this. Um, what I have noticed in my colour draft and workings is that I really want to include a lot of gold, bronzes, um, and my phone went ping pong, <laughs> um, and colours that are reflected throughout nature, so not just the seasons but nature itself which is pretty much every single colour in the book. And, but at the same time I still want to include white areas because I feel that you need for a drawing to be fully balanced it's got to have dark as well as light on the widest end of the spectrums as well as the mid ranges. The underbelly um, I probably will stick with the YR21 and the G00 and also I've got G000 in there. And the nice thing is I can lay down the colour really fast with the chisel end. Whee. 
and because Copics you can blend so quickly with I can do a colour and then do an overlay so if any if a colour oh sugar yeah guess what I just did um, <laughs> if a colour is too strong uh, then I can blend it out with the blender oh my gosh that was close <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can tell I'm half asleep, can't you? <laughs> because, of course, cheap copy of paper, it bleeds through. I nearly just had bleed, pen bleed onto my original order. Oh, I mean, there's definitely a lot of uh, areas on this drawing that I want to put things like um, the browns into because if it's all too green then that's going to almost be too confusing for the viewer so you're not going to be able to actually define one piece to the other but as you can see here where I've added in a long stretch of brown which would be like a branch or something it just would help break up the image and give it a bit more kind of depth and variation to it but even that, I've got to do that within, I've got to limit it still because I don't want that to be the overdominant colour. And the nice thing about Copics is because you can get such thin fine lines with them that I shouldn't have any problems elongating any lines that I want or even adding lines in. I have noticed some bits I've lost a little bit of the ink behind but I think I should be able to fix that hopefully but there are colour combinations that I do like and then there's a few that I'm like rrr, rrr. maybe not I could stay to much lighter greens um, or I could go to more vibrant colours. The grass colours uh, up here I definitely definitely want to change. I'm not happy 100% with the vibrancy. I think I've put greens in there that are far too bright. So I can mute that down turning a lot of them into moss green colours and then maybe have a few of the brighter greens just dotted throughout the leaves like so. Uh, the reds I haven't put in proper reds yet um, that's another area that I've got to work out what's going to be best Cause again with reds you've got to be quite careful not to make it too bright because if it's too bright it's just going to stick out and distract from the whole image and I can push greens in with some of the browns to create moss uh, looks And then with the kind of leaves on the spine, I can just put oranges in with that. I mean, I definitely, definitely want to keep the whites in there. So if we bring in, I mean, I quite like the um, Daisy Bellis as whites. But then with the roses and the bluebells and the cornflowers, colour's probably going to work on those. But that's a challenge. So that's, that's why I'm going to probably do multiple um, photocopies and then go from there. I'm in two minds about doing one with the Spectrum Noir markers. Now, the reason I've been airing more to the Copics is because I trust them and I've been struggling with the Spectrum Noir. I've, I know how to use them but the results aren't the same um, so it's, it's kind of an argument for me of do I spend time using a pen that I'm not as comfortable with and just do like different mediums maybe even do one of these in um, colour pencil or do I just stick with what I know and go with that? So um, that could that could get quite interesting. 
Oh, sorry. A baby sprout seems to have um, attacked the page. You know what they say? You gotta eat your greens. Um, colour background as well. Um, I'm tempted to go for a light blue on the background. Um, now, the thing is, when the image is complete, it's not going to have any of this, um, any of this like junky notes and stuff. But I'm quite tempted on doing like a um, blue gradient. Let me grab a. Here we go. My favourite pencils, the luminance. You always get a lovely rich colour with the luminance. So I could do almost like a halo effect with blue. Just bonk some in there. Or I could have it simply on a white background. So this is uh, something else that I need to just kind of sit down with all of the black and white copies that I get and just go over as much as possible. And that's why it's really important whenever you do a really nice drawing in black and white, don't immediately colour it. Get some copies and play, because playing is half the fun. <laughs> yeah, you reckon Void? Oh. Um, yeah, I meant to. I'm definitely going to be trying it out. And the nice thing, if I do a blue background, I could do a gradient, so you could have kind of a dark blue up here, a light blue uh, further down. So you can tell, even when the drawing's technically complete, it's not going to be complete because there's still a lot of things to work out. Yeah, I could stick. Th I could scan the black and white image and do it on a computer, um, but in all honesty, I don't have time. It's easy, yeah, to stick something on a computer, scan it in, and do all of the editing and changes on the computer. The only thing is, a computer can't show you as good as texture as pencil does. It can't really replicate that to such a degree. So. That's where actually using the physical medium is going to be a big help in finding out how this works the best. And in truth, I think probably every image will work. It's just a case of um, personal preference over customer preference. So back to Mr. Black and White. You can see the ink's gone through onto there. So here's the Black and White again. <laughs> yeah, I'm beginning to like the colour a lot. <laughs> so, as I say, I've still got all of this area to clean up. What I may do is do that um, over the next couple of days at work, in my lunch hours. But if anybody dares put a cup of coffee near me, they are going to be in trouble. Because coffee stains, I can't get out of paper. She has an idea. I could get some um, coffee and tea and do that trick where you take watercolour paper and you stain it with the coffee grinds and you make um, tan paper with it. It's absolutely great fun. Huge mess. But um, then I could dry that paper, send it through the photocopier with this image on and how would I colour it? I'll still be able to colour that because I could use white acrylics just to bring out the highlights. Ooh, ah! This is the worst thing when you've got a blank, uh, kind of blank canvas of a drawing. You suddenly think, "Ooh, I could do that! I could do that!" That's what I love about this sort of work. A little bit more detail in there. And 
and uh, by the way this um, tonight's video will be uploaded onto YouTube so if you want to see all of the work so far uh, there is a link down below somewhere to my YouTube channel my little little spot on YouTube it's very humble very small uh, but this will be going on there as probably part f yeah part three and then the next upload like I say hopefully I should have some more work on this in the next few days life uh, depending on if that gets in the way and of course you're welcome to follow me or subscribe or whatever <laughs> either the options are because everyone is welcome if you have any suggestions you'd like to see me do uh, feel free to drop them by I can't guarantee that I can do any but um, I always open it it's all part of uh, drawing an artist to inspire each other darken that area up and this bit that's better um have I ever considered selling copies, coloured or just line up? Um, with this one, I probably will do. I probably will sell um, the coloured versions, depending on how kind of the colour develops. I may even do uh, almost like series, so a red one, a green one, a yellow one, brown one, where those main colours go all the way through um, so might do that uh, the black and white it might go into my portfolio for colouring in book I'll be, uh, be absolutely honest though I don't know how many people are going to have the patience to colour in the detail because this isn't the most detailed drawing that I've done by any means um, but if you look at the market for colouring books a lot of it is floral which I don't normally ever touch um, but the images themselves are big chunky uh, lots of white space in some and others don't have much white space but the lines are quite thick so um, I've got a white chocolate bars yes Ow. oh my god the sprouts are breeding no um, just opened up a drawer and just found a whole bag of sprouts Sprouts! <laughs> so, I swear I'm going to look under my pillow and find them there. Um, so, Spectrum Noir do these colorista pads, and this is a foiled one. So, it's got um, shimmery foil, and it should have. Oh, yeah, and it's got um, sparkly, glittery stuff embedded into the paper. So, you can see you've got the thicker line and the thinner line, but the images are quite open and you kind of compare um, well, so for them this would be probably be the standard sizes I mean there, there's a teeny weeny one there actually that's quite interesting I never noticed that teeny one there uh, so my detail level is on par with that for a lot of people they probably would just run a pen straight over that and maybe use a gel pen to pick out detail and then put the detail into the bigger images where it's it's easier because not everyone's got good eyesight so something as fine detailed as this may just be too much so let's go in Up and along. so you can just see the butterfly versus um, so a little flower there but uh, I'll certainly probably put it in my colouring in portfolio but uh, I, and I'll certainly have a go at trying to sell 
most of the work that I do sell is um, bigger and um, more open and at Christmas uh, in November, kind of beginning of November, sorry, end of November, beginning of December, I did do a craft show where I sold uh, colouring in images and the more complex ones didn't sell but the, it was more designed on the kind of kids range. I just, I, I'm in two minds, I was, it's definitely going to go in the portfolio. But I'll probably end up having to have a chat with the chap who does my printing. He's a, he's a very, very good gallery owner. And he can normally tell what's hot and what's not. But if I went to one of the big companies and said, this is my design, put it in your colour and end book, um, I don't honestly think it would. Yep, seasonal colours could definitely go in for because lots of leaves you do get the seasonal colours so yeah that's definitely definitely going to be uh, on the books I can see myself spending the whole year colouring can't you I mean I do have a kind of sale page on a company called Crafty Prints I do do digital stamp design now and then for those so uh, people who don't want to go out and buy rubber stamps or crafting and card making they can buy a digital file and just print it off whenever they want um, but if I put this on the page I I don't think it will sell possibly if I put a colour version on um, that might but then it comes down to what's the client going to use the image for? Would this work as a birthday image, a Christmas image? But that's where I'm um, void you saying about doing four different colours for each season. That would coincide with that. So a winter dragon using blues and violets and such would look very pretty and then could be associated with one of the winter seasons. I could always add a candy cane in somewhere. Just chucking leaves left, right and centre. And by the way, sorry if the sound of me swallowing is quite loud. Uh, my throat uh, is not the best at swallowing. So void you have very very good ideas. He was doing the inspiring good. So something I never understand is when you get a someone does a drawing and you ask them, Oh, how did you do that? And they say, Oh no no, I'm not telling you. It's trade secret. It's nicer to share the ideas and thoughts and inspire others. It's always good. Right. Heave. Uh, how often do I plan to stream? I sadly can't set up a regular schedule because of work commitments. Um, I can literally just be called into work at silly o'clock in the morning if somebody pulls off sick or I'm asked to stay till silly o'clock at night because they've got stock to move or something else goes squiffy there's a lot of sickness so I'm hoping 
Um, I'm certainly hoping to get some done tomorrow. It depends on how much chaos I walk into work. Uh, so for UK time, it's really any time after, uh, let's see, 7 o'clock-ish. But um, it depends if I've got a day off, then it could be any point during the day. It depends on other commitments. So, like I said, I sadly don't have a set time. I am hoping to be back tomorrow. Um, but if you do wish to see more, you're more than welcome to follow. Um, and it's been lovely having you here today, Void, so thank you. And uh, actually on that note, I think I'm going to call it quits for tonight. Because it's 1941. <laughs> um, there's a joke in there. <laughs> And we've been streaming for 1.25 hours, which isn't bad. A bit shorter than yesterday's two and a bit hours. So I hope this has helped inspire you guys to go out, get a bit of paper, find that pencil. It's in that pencil case somewhere. And have a go at drawing. Go out, get some reference photos if you can, or sit and draw a duck. It will help you learn and improve and gain so much. So all the best everyone, please take care and happy drawing. And I hope to see you all again soon. Night night. <laughs>